Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Jesper Söderlund about the airbase classic Escape. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, the story behind Escape by Airbase, my interview with Jesper Söderlund. Enjoy! Jesper Söderlund is a Swedish DJ and producer who is known under project names such as Scarab, Ra, Ozone and many others. But his most famous project is Airbase, which you might know from releases such as Genie, Medusa, Garden State, Panache and of course Escape. I recently sat down with Jesper to ask him about the story behind Escape. My first question to him was around what year he started to listen to music. That must be, and it's gonna date me, but uh, around 89, 90, that's when I came, became aware of music. Mm -hmm. uh, like, this is something I like more than other stuff. Yeah. Um, but I've heard music my whole life since my, my father is a, uh, was a rock musician, so uh, the house was always filled with music. I just didn't care much for it. But then I heard electronic music and I thought, okay, there's, there's other things and this I like, and that's kind of when I became aware of, of, of uh, music. Yeah. Which kind of artists were you listening to back then? Uh, I think um, like the really early uh, to Unlimited a little bit before they uh, they broke. Well, well, they kind of broke with the first single, but uh, that stuff, um, R&B, uh, kind of synthy. What's their what's their name? Um, uh, but like productions that had synth content, like Tainted Love, a little bit of a, a, an electronic vibe. Yeah. I, those kind of I got my attention. I thought this is this is something different than than the rock like, music. Uh, yeah, I like the harmonic and the guitar stuff, and there's something else, and I uh, I like that. Uh, when did you start with making music yourself? Uh, 1994 uh, was the year I visited my uh, cousins in Finland. I am I'm part Finnish, and they had a software called Screen Tracker, and uh, by way of the 90s and part of the 20th uh, centuries, uh, 20th century, uh, I just copied his software and brought it home. He showed how it works, and we figured out the rest when me and my brother got home uh, and made terrible music for many years. But 94, that's when we started it off. Do you still have some of that music? I do. I've been, uh, I've had some big, really big, uh, like backup crashes through the years. But that old stuff, I, I, I actually have stored somewhere. Wow. Keep, keep it safe. I, I will. I, I've learned the, the value of backups now. Yeah, so yeah. They're back, backed so, up. So are you actually musically trained? Uh, I played tr drums as a kid because it seemed cool. Uh, now I just wished I would have picked piano or guitar instead. And since my father was a musician, we had guitars everywhere. So I don't know why I picked that up. Uh, I didn't pick that up. I guess video games seem more interesting. And um, yeah, so no, not classically trained. If you don't count drumming, but I, I don't remember any drumming anyways. So. Okay, so do you remember your very first ever release? Uh, well, I have, I have like two first ones, but the, the one that I consider like to be the, the main someone wanted to sign something I did and release it to the world. And that was uh, Air, um, Airways Emotion, uh, which was released on Alphabet City, a German label. And uh, that was a while ago. Yeah, it's exac exactly 20 years ago. Exactly. Congratulations. Ago, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, so how did you actually come up with the name Airbase? Uh, in, in the early, like, uh, 99, 2000, um, there was a, a website, uh, the, the older people know, uh, mp3.com, which was completely dominated in the trans category by a um, group called Trans Control. And I, they come from the same city as me, and they had, uh, I, I visited them a couple of times. And they had a lot of hardware, I invested a lot in hardware. I was always like a software producer. But they had like a mod module, a uh, rack module called the Umox Airbase, uh, a a B-A-S-S. Um, and I thought that sounded cool. So I, I've always been terrible with artist names uh, and track names. And, but I just thought it sounded cool and uh, just went for it and switched the last S for an E and thought, sounds good, looks good. Yeah. I'll go with that. So, yeah. yeah. And now I'm kind of stuck with it. I can't, yeah, I can't exactly. throw it out now. Yeah, so, exactly, yeah. exactly. So yeah, for this vlog we're going to talk about Escape, a beautiful trance track you did back in the year 2006. Uh, was there anything that inspired you when you started to work on the track? Absolutely nothing. Uh, the fact is, the, 
Escape was produced as a filler track. No way. Yeah. So in 2005, four, I thought it might be a good idea. I've had a couple of releases. It's time for to do an album. So I started to put together an album, wrote, uh, which is really hard because you make a track you think is great, and then you just immediately have to start making a new track, and you want it to be better than the, the previous one, mm -hmm. and you just do that over and over, and it's like hard to top yourself all the time. And when I thought, okay, this album is done, and I just dragged all the files into iTunes, thought, okay, this is like 69 minutes long. And I've always hated albums that waste space on the CD, so I thought, okay, I have eight, eight nine minutes left. Yeah, okay, let's crack a bottle of wine and see if I can just make a track to fill those minutes. And in like three or four hours, I, I made Escape. And it's so annoying, too, <laughs> because it turned out so well, but uh, yeah. But th this is why I love doing these interviews, because I hear like, stuff like this and like what the hell like yeah so it, it was a filler track it was a filler track and uh, the al uh, that album specifically didn't come to a conclusion uh, it kind of broke up into a couple of singles I think uh, Medusa and uh, One Tear Away was uh, part of that as well but uh, Escape kind of went on to live its own life as uh, one of my more successful um, releases and uh, yeah the, the bits and pieces of that album is actually on, on an, uh, like a, a collection I have something on the, on the streaming services called Aries Collection with like bits and pieces that ha has fallen off the table that um, if, if anyone's interested in that stuff. I think you should try to do more fellow tracks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that, I mean, the, the tempo at which I'm producing right now, I'm, I'm getting stuck in like super nitty gritty details. It takes a year to make a track and I just wish I could do the same. Okay, three hours, it has to be a track and just give me that yeah. kind of limitation. Yeah. Oh, wow. So can you tell a bit more about the production process of uh, Escape? I've, um, it might not come as a surprise to most people with my tracks that I, I produce it, everything uh, like from start to finish. I don't have, um, I don't start with the main part and then build from that. I start with the intro. I always try to build a vibe. The problem that's a big problem making tra tracks with big intros because when you go out and DJ, you only get one intro. You can't stop and do more intros. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, I just like making this big set the stage kind of uh, intro style and then. Uh, and chronologically build myself into what would make sense here and then where does this feeling kind of take take me and at that point I tried a very new synth uh, I, call, I think it was called Adventus uh, which had a very specific sound that I thought this is something that I want to use and that is actually that, that's the lead part of, of Escape is like preset number two untouched I don't even think I, I don't think I even touched the filters I just filtered the audio sin, signal above uh, which trivia there's a little little crack before in the middle of the break like a small tiny crack uh, which someone at one point uh, contacted me about and told me I bought your track and there's a crack in the middle and I said yeah that's in the production I want a refund I, I didn't expect that crack so they wanted to refund because the production had that kind of mistake because the, the attack of the filter was too slow or something so did, did he get his refund yeah he did I'm <laughs> I, you're too nice I, I'm, I guess I am <laughs> So yeah, what, what was the most, yeah, maybe this is not, not really a valid question, but what was the most difficult part of the production? I always have a problem. Um, I find it very easy to build up to the kind of intro part and then you just kind of shut everything down. And that's like, the main theme is not it's very difficult for me. It's how do you progress into the theme? So that's, if you would go search my hard drive, you would find so many finished uh, unfinished products, uh, which, didn't come to fruition because I didn't know how to connect the, that part to the melody that I want to go with it. It just kind of breaks in the middle. It's a really rocky, rocky ground there. So I have a lot of two, three minute <laughs> tracks uh, with like, and then you have some silence and then you have the lead and it thinks it's great, but couldn't find a good way to, yeah. to ca uh, get them together. So it, the same was there. And I guess that's where the, the crack part is. And that's one of the good things with having um, uh, a big intro. You can reuse parts of that to kind yeah. of set the stage and then tweak it in the, the melody. And I guess it worked. Sometimes the stars just align and with Escape they they did. Yeah, well, it was a good day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want more good days, that's yeah, exactly. for sure. Yeah. So yeah, Escape got signed to Man of the Young's label Intuition Recordings uh, and it became a double A site alongside the track For the Fallen. Uh, was it hard to find a label for the track once it was finished? No, I have had been doing, uh, and this is where you kind of forget the details since it's so long ago, but I had released some stuff there already, I think. I was in good contact with, uh, with Menno, and uh, they loved it from the start. Uh, so I didn't have, I mean, a lot of the 
I have like 12 or 13 different uh, aliases for my music and it, it's all the reason for that is okay you go to your favorite label they say no then you go to your next favorite label and you can have to shop it down the line and see if someone is interested in it and they will they will need their own name and not not really if you know how to do the contrast right but that's the, the reason I have so many names mm -hmm. and in this case they wanted it uh, from the start so I, I got the track signed where I wanted it signed because that label worked very we had a very good uh, collaboration so that worked very well for me so, so intuition was your first choice as a label yep yeah okay good so do you remember some of the DJs that did support escape uh, Armin was a very big supporter of, of escape but it seemed like it was catching on on uh, it, it, it was supported by, I would say, most DJs that would be relevant for that kind of music. But I think it made more of a, an impact from the listener side. It came out around like when FaceTime, uh, no, sorry, um, Facebook, social media was kind of catching on, and you could tell from forums that it it was kind of building momentum by people sharing uh, that. Uh, oh, what is this kind of track? And they didn't necessarily need to find it through a through like the radio channels or anything. So it kind of started building its own momentum. At, at least that's what I recall. Yeah. So yeah, so, yeah um, is there a story behind the title as well? You know, I have a, a text file on my computer and my phone where when I uh, stumble upon nice words, I just save them there because I know eventually I will have to name a track and I will not know what to name it. And I will just pick one from the list. So if anyone thinks I have a lot of thoughts going into my naming on my tracks I'm sorry to disappoint I'm just picking the best word for the moment right now and uh, that's the same for like Mondegreen, Lacrimose uh, um, yeah it's a it's a long document and yeah. when when I run out of those I don't know what to do escape two, I guess yeah escape two. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah during the years escape got remixed by people such as uh, Sonny Lex uh, Daniel Van Sant and Der Mystic um, if you could pick whoever you wanted to make a new remix of escape who would you pick then and why that is a really funny question. Uh, it doesn't need to be trans, I mean. Yeah, uh, I've been very into Sonlux, uh, yeah, um, like an electronic band from, from America, who does really weird stuff. I think it would be nice to see what they would do with it, or someone that is not obviously dance music, like Hybrid or John Hopkins, someone oh, that yeah, could... Yeah. Um, or Nils Fromm would be nice, because it's such a sad song. Uh, Suicide music, as my girlfriend calls, uh, yeah, yeah. calls it. Just sad notes. It's too many sad notes. Uh, someone that knows their way around sad notes and yeah. can breed some nice new life into it. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, do you consider Escape as one of your most successful releases? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was, uh, and that, it, and that's humbling and it's uh, fun and it's nice and also a little bit annoying since it was made with so little effort. I yeah, guess. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's annoying. Yeah. Um, so is it also your most favorite production you ever done? No, the, uh, it's not. Uh, and I know you shouldn't do this, but I remade the track for the um, for the 2011 We Might Fall album as, as an intro um, album kind of version, which differs. And I, th I tried to address the problems that I had with that production, and I uh, didn't get it. I still like that version, but it's well, I'm never happy. That's yeah. I guess that's the problem. If, if I have to think, the one I like the most is the most recent one. Uh, and as soon as that is kind of left the, the short-term memory, I, I'm, you always love and hate your music, especially when it's like newly finished, because you've heard it so many times, you don't want to hear it anymore. Uh, but it's still like at the, the, the top, the pinnacle of your creative talent at that moment. Yeah. And uh, then you always try to, to top that. But yeah, it's not, it's not in my top five I, I would say yeah, I'm happy that it uh, holds up quite well but um, yeah so do, do, do you do you listen to your old stuff from time to time or not really I I do like Spotify bender sometimes when I, or someone reminds me of something I've, I've done or, or something like that I kind of listen to okay which one was that okay I'll listen to it a little bit and oh yeah that was at the same time as I wrote that track and uh, then Spotify keeps uh, reminding me about stuff. Oh, I did that. Oh, I don't, didn't remember that. Oh, I remixed Marcel Woods. I didn't remember. And oh, that sounds fun. And then I can, an hour or two can just disappear. Yeah. And it's a good way to to remind myself that I I can be creative. Mm -hmm. I'm not the most creative person in the world. I will never uh, argue that. But to me, it sounds like I was having. I can hear that I was having fun doing this stuff. Yeah. Uh, not always with 
huge success, but I'm hearing that uh, I was inspired and having fun. So it's also in a way inspiring me. So I could start listening to my old stuff before producing new stuff, new just stuff, to yeah. getting into that mindset that this is supposed to be fun because that's something that is easily lost when you've been doing this for a long time. You put the pressure uh, on yourself and uh, it's this is supposed to be fun. Yeah, and exactly. uh, that's yeah. Uh, yeah, something you have to remind yourself yeah. of quite often. Yeah. Yeah, you already said before, like you're, you're not super active anymore, but what, what are you up to these days? I uh, just had a baby daughter last year. Uh, it takes up quite a bit of time, mm -hmm. but it's it's fun times, uh, challenging times. But it means also that uh, not a lot of time is being spent in the studio. Um, um, I'm producing some, not much. Uh, I actually did a uh, track last year with um, a named after my daughter, yeah. Aiden. And uh, I got I got so many good stuff just waiting to be finished, which are past that difficult mid part. Mm -hmm. So I, I just need uh, need time. I don't know if anyone with kids can tell me when I will have time again. <laughs> Most people will argue that yeah. there's no more time, so we'll see. But I'm, I haven't given it up. Yeah, I'm just uh, uh, slumbering to get yeah, back yeah. into it because I'm, I still love producing music. It's, uh, so we can still expect new music from you? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, that, that's good news. So are there still any people you would have liked to work with or still want to work with? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've always wanted to, to work with uh, Susanna. I don't. I've reached out a couple of times, but uh, never came to any fruition. But usually, I don't do well in co-producing. I'm too much of a control freak, and I need to. Uh, I, I'm. I'm just terrible to work with. I think uh, <laughs> we would have to do some kind of sequential um, uh, collaboration then. But I do something, and then someone takes over, or the other way around. But yeah. doing it at the same time, I'm. I'm not very good with that. Okay. Perhaps I should get better with that. I mean, just before we started with the interview, we, we spoke about BT. Like yeah. Airbase uh, featuring BT or the other way around. Yeah, that would be nice. But I would spend most time just looking at what he was doing and learn, learn, like take it all in. Yeah. See what, what, what's, the, what's the magic juice. Yeah, but that would be fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So is there still something on your bucket list music-wise? Sorry? Is there still something on your bucket list music-wise? Uh, I've done a lot. I've, I've Released a lot of music, and I've um, um, I played a, a lot of the big places, and uh, I don't. Know, it's just fun, and this has always been like a side hustle for me, anyway. So I've been very blessed to be able to see and experience things that most people will not, yeah. and uh, I. It would be. It feels wrong of me to to say I want more of it, but I just love playing and I love being in front of a, a big audience, which is strange because I have such huge problem with stage fright. It's mm -hmm. been uh, getting better over the years, but it's just so fun. Uh, that, and uh, yeah, I don't know what what more I could expect, just more of it than I guess it's if I have It's funny because I, I forgot the word, but I watched this documentary on Netflix about Swedish music, yeah. and musicians, and you guys are always like super humble. That, that, that's a word for it, I think? Uh, I, like the, you're not. Oh, I think you know, I know which documentary. Uh, it's like a Yante, which you're, you're not supposed to like, to like brag that you're yeah. better than anyone yeah, yeah, else. Yeah, so yeah. you kind of keep it uh, low key. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. like the Yante Lagen. Yeah, so yeah. you don't want to. It will annoy other people if you okay. brag about your successes. So you need to keep them close to yeah. yourself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, what, what kind of music do you listen to in your spare time? Uh, I've been listening to very little trance music for many years now. Uh, I noticed I need some um, inspiration from other places. I don't want to, because trance music is quite, I um, hope I don't get into trouble for this, but it's kind of a um, conservative genre. It's very um, backwards looking, inwards looking. It's, uh, it's very, very self-referential. It, it's not very open to uh, influences from the outside. Yeah. Uh, and I think that is a missed opportunity. So I thought, and I've, since it's been a, a big, um, a hobby like a hobby plus for me I thought it's up to me to to try to I no one can tell me what to produce mm -hmm. uh, only me so I thought I need new input from other uh, other kind of music so it's been much a lot of singer songwriter but also like more eclectic strange things even getting into a little bit of rock music uh, uh, with like a real instrument kind of music mm -hmm. but also like Son Lux the, the, the tweaky uh, strange quirky kind of electronic music uh, where people do things like or Nils from beating the world's most expensive symbol with that yeah. toilet brush just to <laughs> get specific sound. Listening to that kind of thing, but just to, to widen the palette, it's yeah. it's good. And I have like a playlist on Spotify where I save everything 
uh, that I thought, oh, that's that's a nice idea for something. And it's funny because the list has hundreds of songs and I can just go and play any song and I remember why I added it. Yeah. So uh, I don't need to keep a track of, okay, it's this song, one minute in, they made a good thing with a like a trombone, but I will just instantly remember yeah, what yeah, it is. You know, like, okay, this is why I added it to this list. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I'm, I'm open to all kind of music. Good mu I listen to good music. Okay, That's, uh, yeah. And the last question, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Of course. Good. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. I'm, I think there are the two camps is that either you love pineapple on pizza mm -hmm. or you haven't tried pineapple yeah. on pizza. Then you need to try it. Yeah. I think it's uh, salty needs to meet up with sweet sometimes yeah. and pineapple pizza I, i'm team pineapple okay. for sure good good well thanks a lot for your time and good luck with everything thank you very much all right that was it this week's vlog the story behind escape by airbase my interview with jesper soderlund jesper thank you very much for your time much appreciated thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the vlog if you did make sure to give this video a like Leave a comment in the comment section below and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And I did a second interview with Jesper and in that one he shares the story behind the airbase track Denial. That interview will be online in a few weeks from now so stay tuned. Once again thanks for watching and until next time bye bye.